Hi there everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and I'm a real estate agent here in Pittsburgh with Remax 360 Realty, and I specialize in first time home buyers and relocation. Today I'm gonna to be talking about which neighborhoods are the best neighborhoods to move to, and I definitely know the neighborhoods that I think it would be best to move to if you are of the mindset that you would like to meet people and get acquainted with the city and get in a group and get in a vibe and make your friends and family here. Yes, I know all the best neighborhoods in order to achieve those goals. So the first neighborhood that's gonna be a great neighborhood to move to is none other than my favorite, my personal favorite community, Brookline. So Brookline is going to be in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. It's gonna be on the city side of the South Hills. It has affordable housing, uh, relatively affordable housing. It has a lot of millennial culture. There's a lot of millennials moving here. Um, I think there's more millennials here than a lot of other surrounding communities. Um, a lot of single millennials, they don't yet have children in which they would move to the suburbs. And then there's a lot of uh, commerce and shops and nightlife going on both in Brookline on the boulevard, the Brookline Boulevard, and next door in Dormont, which is just a hot skip and a jump away. Obviously, the biggest factor here is that you can buy a really decent house for under $200,000 here. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. It's true. So if you're looking to buy a house instead of renting, which I would always recommend, definitely, definitely, definitely look into Brookline if you are okay with living in the city limits. The next one is going to be a lot pricier, but it's a lot more fashionable and a lot more hip and a lot more things going on. It's gonna be Lawrenceville. What else could it possibly be? Lawrenceville is the Pittsburgh hub for all things that are going on right now. It is the place to be. It's got a lot of restaurants, it's got a lot of shops, it's got a lot of bars and nightlife and just a ton of things to do. And the population is very, very densely packed there. So while it's difficult to park in Lawrenceville at night, especially at night, oh my God, it's tough. It's really tough. Although there are some drawbacks about Lawrenceville and that being one of them, it is such a great place to be to meet people because again, so many people live there and even if they don't live there, they're going to be out and about in Lawrenceville and people that are from outside of Lawrenceville come into Lawrenceville all the time to do stuff. So the chances of you meeting people, whether it's like romantic interests or meeting friends or um, business contacts or making business contacts, it can all be done in Lawrenceville. And not only that, Lawrenceville is very close to the other trendy areas of the city like Stanton Heights, Morningside. Squirrel Hill and Shady Side. The next neighborhood I'm going to be talking about is actually Stanton Heights slash Morningside. I'm lumping them together because they're both very small neighborhoods, and when you pack them together, they're both basically in the same area and basically have the same things going on. Um, Morningside is more expensive than Stanton Heights, which is up on the hill, and Morningside is down the hill. The real estate in Morningside definitely took off a little bit sooner than Stanton Heights, so Stanton Heights is catching up. But Stanton Heights is definitely still an up and coming neighborhood in which you can find real estate for under $300,000, something that might be a little bit more difficult in Morningside. The big draw to Stanton Heights is that it is so close to East Liberty and it's also so, so close to Lawrenceville. It is literally like a five minute drive each way and it has the affordable housing. So that's really, really a prime spot right now where a lot of millennials are flocking to because of the affordable housing. And a lot of them are okay with living in the city limits because they don't have, um, or they don't desire the suburban life, where if you're having children, you may desire to live a more suburban life. But um, yeah, it's really a great place to meet people. I know that there's a lot of people walking their dogs in Stanton Heights. That's a great way to meet people. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to the pubs at the bottom of the hill in Morningside and meeting people. Um, there is a lot of um, park space close by in which you can um, walk around, play with your dog, meet people. It's just got a lot of things going for it and you don't have to really drive or walk large distances to get where you need to go. You're basically within a mile of anything you would ever need in Pittsburgh. So it's like, huh, if you live there, you may never have to leave there because you got everything right there. <laughs> it's all here. The next area of Pittsburgh I'm gonna be talking about is Bloomfield. Now this is another city area. Um, actually, most of these are going to be city areas. Bloomfield 
is one of the classic neighborhoods of Pittsburgh. When you think of Pittsburgh and you think of the city of Pittsburgh, a lot of people immediately think about Bloomfield. Um, it's definitely got an Italian culture. It's where a lot of the Italian immigrants settled and raised their families, my family included. I have Sicilian heritage and my great grandparents um, grew up there and met there and got married and lived there for a while. So yes, big Italian culture there and it's got a ton of restaurants, a ton of shops. Um, one of the great things about Bloomfield in particular that I love is my favorite hospital that I think gives amazing service and amazing care is there. It is uh, West Penn Hospital, which is part of the Allegheny Health Network. So if you are health conscious and you want to have a hospital nearby wherever you live, Bloomfield might be the perfect place. It is also a very, very urban area with a lot of houses tightly packed together in row houses, which could be said of um, Lawrenceville as well as the two are pretty closely connected. So Bloomfield is up the hill and Lawrenceville is down the hill but lots of hills in Pittsburgh if you couldn't guess. Never would have guessed. Really? But yeah, it's gonna be very, very densely packed. But again, that is great for meeting people and really getting out there and putting yourself out there. Some of the drawbacks to these really densely packed neighborhoods is the traffic, it is the parking, so that's something that you'll also have to look out for in Bloomfield, but again, there's just a lot a lot, a lot of culture there to really dig into and you could spend weeks and months just in Bloomfield and not really discover all that it has to offer. The next neighborhood I'm gonna be talking about is Squirrel Hill. Squirrel Hill is on the east side of the city and it is another city suburb that I really, 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 really enjoy. The problem with Squirrel Hill is that it is very expensive to buy a house there. Um, it's gonna be more expensive to buy a house there than basically any other neighborhood in Pittsburgh besides maybe like Shadyside or Swickley or Fox Chapel. Yeah, it's, Squirrel Hill is going to be very expensive. There are million dollar mansions, there are um, you know, $900,000, $800,000, $700,000 houses there. However, there are some pockets of Squirrel Hill, mainly the ones near Greenfield, that have more affordable housing, but that's going to be probably in the 300 to the 400s at um, minimum. Nevertheless, if you plan on renting um, for a year or two before you decide to buy, like if you want to see if the market is going to cool down or if prices are going to go down, I think Squirrel Hill is a really, really great place to wait it out because Squirrel Hill's got a lot of um, old timey Pittsburgh culture and feel. It has got a lot of um, grace and elegance, I think. Um, th there's just a way that Squirrel Hill people carry themselves. It's like very cool, but very elegant. And it's just a great place with a great vibe. And honestly, just walking around the streets with your dog, looking at the architecture is worth living there. Now, like any other place in the city, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find parking at busy hours, and um, there's gonna be a lot of dense population issues, and if you're if you're renting an apartment, you're gonna find that a lot of those places are uh, packed together. So if that's not something that bothers you, then Squirrel Hill is really a great place to be. It's just it's just got a really lovely vibe to it. And you can get that really authentic, um, vintage sort of Pittsburgh feel from the neighborhood. That's like the best way that I can describe it as a local. The next best neighborhood to move to is going to be a place called Highland Park, which is very, very close to East Liberty. Uh, it's very close to Stanton Heights. It's very close to Morningside, and it is close to Shadyside. Highland Park is known for its giant park. And I mean, there's this huge, beautiful park with a ton of things to do there. And it is also known for its really old Victorian homes that are huge, have a lot of character, but also need a lot of work. This is gonna be a community where there's not a lot going on in it, where there's not like a lot of commerce or restaurants. It's more like a residential area. But buying a house in this neighborhood is going to cost you a bit of money. Not necessarily because the base prices are more expensive than other areas close to it, but because 
the houses are very old and they tend to need a lot of upkeep and a lot of um, renovation and a lot of work. So if that's something that interests you and you have the budget for it, I'd say Highland Park is the perfect place to find that old time Pittsburgh home experience. But there's definitely one huge drawback to Highland Park and I would say that's gonna be the Pittsburgh uh, Police Training Academy is there. So sometimes you will hear gunshots and it's gonna be a little bit loud because of that. If you have any animals that are sensitive to sounds or if you're sensitive to sounds, then Highland Park might not be the best place to live but it is definitely one that would be on my personal radar only because I love Victorian houses and it's a close drive to basically everything you would ever need the next best community is Regent Square. So Regent Square is closer to the Swissville neighborhood. Um, it's a little bit closer to Squirrel Hill than um, some of the other ones mentioned. Regent Square is a very popular neighborhood because it has wonderful parks, it's a very big bike riding community, it's great for walking your dog, the houses are older but a little bit less big than Highland Park and they're very manageable in size. It's got a lot of charm and a lot of character in the neighborhood and I don't know if any of my watchers are queer or they're part of the LGBTQIA community but it is a very 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 big queer community where a lot of queer people represent themselves and they're out and proud and there's a lot of gay pride flags out and it's just a very like cool inclusive lovely wonderful charming community I absolutely love it there I know for a fact that the taxes there can be pretty hefty and it may be because of the school district that is located in Regent Square I know some parts of Regent Square are in the city and some parts of it are in a suburb so the schools are divided but yes the taxes can be a little bit burdensome there some people find it worth it because they want to live there and they want to be involved in that really vibrant community, but definitely something to keep your eye on if you would consider buying a house there. And the last community on my list is going to be Westview or Ross Township. I'm gonna say more Westview for this particular video because Ross Township is definitely a suburban area with a high clout school. Um, Westview is more of the city area of Ross Township. It's They're both really close together and kind of like get mixed in with each other very often. But Westview, the nice thing about Westview is that you are so close to downtown. You're literally like a five to 10 minute drive to downtown even during rush hour, which is like one of the very nice things about the North Hills is that you don't have to deal with a lot of tunnels. It's just a straight shoot down to wherever you're going. Um, so not a ton of traffic up there. McKnight Road, the main vein that runs through the North Hills, is very um, very easy to drive down in comparison with a lot of other major roadways in Pittsburgh. It's got three to four lanes at all times and so it doesn't get horribly backed up with traffic and the traffic moves relatively quickly. So it's just very, very smooth running up that way. It's very new money up there, if that's the best way to put it. It's So it's like a lot of new-ish, like newer houses, I would say, 70s, 80s, and um, and newer. So the infrastructure is a lot better up there than the South Hills or um, even the east area of the city just because it's newer. So that eases a lot of the traffic problems we see in Pittsburgh and the need to go over bridges and go through tunnels and all that kind of stuff. Everything you could ever need is in the North Hills and it's right at your fingertips. You just drive 15 minutes up McKnight Road and literally there's just, I mean everything. Every store, every shop, every just anything you can imagine is on McKnight Road yes you do have to drive and you should have a car if you live in the North Hills but it is so easy to get everywhere so easy Westview is at the very bottom of that but because of its proximity to both the city the east side of the city you can get to the South Hills relatively quickly and literally basically everywhere it helps having that that closeness to all the things that the North Hills has to offer and the house is there, you can find a decent house for under $250 um, in a wonderful, wonderful Ross Township community. So definitely something to look at there if you want to move to the North Hills but you don't want to commit to any particular suburb or school district. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, please like, please subscribe, please leave comments.
I would love to hear some feedback and I would love to hear from some of you that may be considering buying in Pittsburgh and you'd like a little bit more advice or there's a video you'd like me to create. Please, 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 please tell me that information so that I can create that content for you. It's my passion finding people homes and it is my passion creating YouTube videos. So I hope to continue to do this all for you and I hope to see you all again so soon. Thank you so much.